Hello YouTube, um, since you requested um, some tier list, um, today I'm gonna do the uh, flying unit, uh, basically just because a lot of people ask me about it, uh, which flyers I think are the more powerful or the best and what they are supposed to be. So I'm just gonna put something as a disclaimer. Uh, this is a tier list. It's um, not the go-to tier list. People will have different opinions. Uh, I do not main every race in Spellforce 3. I mainly use the Dark Elf and the Orcs. Uh, so I did play all of them, but I'm not using them like uh, a lot. My main are Dark Elf and my up race is Orc. But yeah, I've played a lot of the other race too so just to put that in perspective i'm gonna try to be as objective as possible and just explain why the flying units are deserving their rank so uh, let's start with the trolls uh, this is the uh, spellbird <laughs> i call them like that it's the bonexer kind of equivalent but uh, flying you know uh, I put them into C tier uh, because they are really late into the game. Uh, you need to have a X camp. You need to have basically tier two. Uh, you need to use one of the regular bird, the Iron Beak, and you need to have the uh, Mogwa Shrine or the Mogwa Sprayer. Or offering, I don't remember the name. Uh, I mean, it's been a while since I've been playing Spellforce. Uh, I'm mostly on Age of Empire now, so forgive me if I mess up the name, but I'll try to be as accurate as possible. Uh, so yeah, basically, they provide no real benefit. They need your army to kill stuff. Then they need your army to be on top of the stuff that they killed. And then you need to bring that bird and cast a spell. So it's really like micro intensive. It's really dependent. But they will uh provide a shield to your front line. But I don't know. Fight in Spellforce are really fast. You either die before you can send the birds in, or you just stream roll and the shield is not really needed as you push forward and your army is not in position to get the shield. So, also they are easy to snipe, they are weak uh, in that regard, so they tend to fly ahead of your army too and just get sniped by the enemy backline. So yeah, C tier. The uh, regular R and Beak, um, I think I want to put them into B tier. Uh, just because they are really great when you mass them, because you have basically free flying scout. And they also are able to deal with any other kind of mass air units. Uh, but you need a lot of them. And they only target air. So they are not really great to do some harassment and like... Basically they're just your anti-air anti unit. That you will upgrade into better one with the other tier like I said. So they're cheap. They are fast. Uh, really, really well, decent. That's why I put them into B tier. Uh, I'm gonna do the droppers. I'll put them into C tier because they are doing tears damage. And sure, they are great to arrest worker and like deal damage with that, but they require stone. And sometimes the trolls want to invest stone into other range units, like the throwers right here, or the uh, spike flingers, or just even shelters or other resource gathering building. Uh, you don't want to invest into birds that will just do a little bit of spears damage, that a thrower will do like two times the damage of the birds. So, situational if you want to do some harassing here and there really fast. Uh, but I would not recommend massing them. Uh, if they will do siege damage, they will be too 
great to OP to just siege down any eco building. You can just mass them and like burn everything to the ground. So I get why they do pierce damage. But yeah, they're a little bit costly. They don't do much. Uh, they're fun. I like the model. I like the ID. But they they're not good in the meta right now. The uh, Iron Peak Fighter, I'm gonna put them in S tier, just because of one build. That troll uh, basically just mass these cheap Iron Beak. They go tier 2. And they have like 40 birds. And the birds, like I said, they do not attack ground. But when you upgrade them with scrap, they do attack ground, they do attack hair. They deal a lot of pierce damage, I think it's like 50 damage. They get a bonus against enemy units, so they will do more than the uh, 50 damage. They will basically shred anything that is light armored, like archer or even ground unit that cannot shoot back. So you can really surprise your opponent by doing a mass uh, iron beak. Uh, if you don't mass them like crazy, like going full uh, bird printer, uh, at best they'll be B or A tier. They're really great if you want to do some harassing on the worker. They are better than the droppers because they are faster. They attack pretty much around the same damage but just attack way faster. Uh, they also cost scrap if I remember and not anything else. Maybe food. But they don't require stone or magra shrine. So they're really better to do what the other guys will do. But yeah, just because of that one build order that you mass them. And if the enemy go for archer, uh, they shred archer. If they go for air, well, they shred air. So you, you pretty much need to prevent that from building up. Or just uh, turtle with your sector outpost. And kind of use the uh, outpost defense as a way to shred the incoming bird swarm. But it's really hard to counter if you didn't scout it or just didn't prepare for a bird push. So yeah, S here for the troll. So that's all the units for the troll that are flying. Uh, I'm gonna move to the elf. They do have the uh, winter bird. I'll put them into A tier because they are rel rarely seen. But I've been facing a lot of dark... Uh, of elf player as dark elf and they do a lot of uh, aoe damage they have a good beam damage too they are kind of hard to deal with if you're not like properly microing them down like if you just a move and forget about them they will shred your entire army because they will have uh, probably like the winter mage here just having a lot of AoE, a lot of ice, a lot of good synergy. Uh, they are not cheap. But I think they pack quite a bunch for their bucks. Um, but like I said, a lot of health players tend to just go with a full ground army. With Protector, Winter Mages and Warden. Uh, but I think facing a couple of uh, Ice Bird. Couple with the Ice Mage. Winter Mage, uh, they are really strong. Uh, do they beat the Iron Beak? No. Uh, they can get countered by a lot of flying units, like the Iron Beak too. They can be targeted down by Focusing Fire with Twisted One or any other sniper. But if they are well microed, they can do a lot of damage. So, I'm putting them into A tier. And for human, uh, another kind of bird. Uh, as a unit per se, I'm gonna put them in C tier. But just because the human economy right now is so strong, I think it's worth having a couple of them or just massing a little bit of them. So not really A tier, because on their own the unit is not that great. It's the human eco that boosts it up a lot. Uh, back in the day there was a meta with bird spawn. Uh, 
that was just really hard to deal with because human was also great back in the day for that. Uh, they got nerfed a little bit, so I'm dropping them to A. And now, because nobody used them, the the human just go for a champion or infantry push, and they are kind of lost a lot of value. Uh, they are a good support unit too, so if you want, you can get the upgrade for them and screech. That will like debuff the enemy. But on their own, they're not really good right now because the human have so much better value out of the other army comp. So I think I'm just gonna put them in B tier. Like having a couple of them is nice. It's just that you need to invest to Academy. So if you're going for Mentalist, it's fine because you already have the building, so you can add a couple of birds. But if you're like full barracks, uh, investing into the Academy and try to get birds out, it's like counterintuitive. If you're not just gonna mass them, if you mass them, maybe they can be A tier, but I didn't see that this meta. They just use the champion and catapult and going full ground army. But a couple of them here and there, they have great HP, they tank a lot. Uh, relatively cheap because the human eco, like I said, are busted right now. Uh, but yeah, overall, great unit. Nothing much to say about them. Uh, it's basically a flying keeper doing magic damage. So, not that bad, not that great. I'm gonna put them there. Uh, the balloon. The flying war balloon of the dwarf. I'm gonna put them into A tier. They are. Costly with the the iron, but every time I play dwarf, I have a lot of time, a lot of irons, and they can really get into a critical mass that is really hard to deal with as the uh, opponent facing the war balloon spam, because they have so much range they can just kite back. And if you want to mass like archers to deal with the balloon, you can upgrade the balloon to have a dropping fire attack. Uh, like a bomber run, just shooting napalms down into the ground. So, if the enemy are going for a lot of infiltrator or crossbowmen or whatnot to deal with your balloon, you can just grab all your balloon, move it on top of the enemy archer, and just rain down fire and kill all the blob. So, they are great AoE clearer, they are great hero sniper because they have like I don't know, 175 damage or something like that. They they deal a lot of damage. It's basically a ballista on the balloon, you know. Uh, so they can snipe high value target like heroes. They can snipe uh, war trolls or any big target like that, uh, and be pretty decent. The range make them so they can kite. Uh, you can use them to flank on maps where there is a bridge or a higher ground that you can just hide all over it and shoot at the worker line. So a lot of uh, value, a lot of uh, potential if you micro them, but they're not S tier because they cost a little bit uh, too much iron to get massed and like really fast. So there is a downtime where you can counter that balloon spam, but once it gets out of them, it's very hard to push into it. Uh, but at the same time, they're really weak. So if you have like Twisted One or, um, how do you say that? Spike Flingers, they have the range to burst down the balloon. They are not tanky. So sniping a couple of them before they retreat is easy to do. It's just hard to catch up to them once they run back and guide you. Because the dwarf will have a lot of Axe Wilder or uh, Berserker and stuff dealing Golem. That will prevent you from pushing forward and reach the balloon. So yeah, definitely a good A tier. Uh, I like to just do a composition of Axe Wilder, Golem, and Balloon. It's really, really strong. But I've been playing against other people that just do a Axe Wilder Sentry. And Mass Sentry can actually go to a two with uh, Mass Balloon. Depending on the build order and the map and fight engagement. So they're great. But... They, they're not OP. They can be dealt with with a planning head. Uh, I think that's the worst flying unit of the game. The uh, dropship. I guess it's fine. It's a cool idea to have a balloon like 
uh, drop a lord if you were playing Starcraft 2. You can load out like a lot of units. I think it's eight place in the drop shit. But they're moving like as fast as a land unit. They are really really easy to snipe down. And the micro to just bring eight axe wielder in or something, drop them into the worker line. The enemy is just gonna bail and your unit won't do anything. You might, if you're lucky, get a, a eco building down, gather your axe wielder and run back. But you could have just run and walk the axe wielder without making a balloon and have the same result because they move as fast as land unit. You can upgrade them to be faster, but at the same time they're still weak. They're still easy to snipe down. Um, and in general, the map in Spell Forestry doesn't allow you to move freely around. There's always a sector outpost or something in the way that make it easy on the map to spot you. Or that it's useless to bring a flying dropship because uh, the map is so huge you can just walk your unit across and they will do the same thing. Um, there's no high ground in Spell Forest, like you cannot bring sentry up in a hill that nobody can reach beside the dropship. So you're you cannot abuse hate or something. It it can be great but but at the moment it's not. It's like you don't want to do that. Oh and if it gets sniped and you have eight unit in it, uh you're gonna lose your eight unit. So just walk them down if you get attacked as you are harassing and you run back you might lose like five or four guy but you're not gonna lose an entire balloon drop ship i mean and eight guys you're gonna lose a couple the rest can regen so nah, i don't like them uh there's one way i think they can be great and it's basically just moving one unit in it Drop them into a place, make a tunnels with the drove. But again, you can just do that on land and just walk one axe wielder instead of dropping it. So, yeah, pretty useless. Uh, that's it for the dwarf. I'm gonna move to the dark elf. I have more knowledge about that, and I can assure you that the beetle are actually one of the best flying unit. They are cheap. They are fast. They're uh, a little bit squishy, so they're easy to snipe with archer and stuff. But if left unchecked, you can have a lot of beetle really fast. They do magic damage. That's one of the only early access to magic damage the Dark Elf have. So they're really great against all tier 1 unit, uh, besides spider. Because most tier 1 unit have negative magic resist. So you will do a lot of damage to heroes, uh, tier 1 unit. If you can mass them really quickly. And think of them like Mutalisk. They can also be used in split group. And just harass the iron mine. Um, or eco in general of your enemy. Uh, you can bring them back to fight. They have an upgrade to do cleave damage. So I mean cleave damage. It's basically a bouncing attack. That deal a little bit of side damage. Other than the primary targets. So... If left unchecked, they can snowball really, really fast. Uh, I've won many games just by making Beetle and Spider only. Because you use the Spider to tank the ground. And as the enemy struggle to to get through all your Spider meat shield, the Beetle on the back just shoot freely and annihilate anything the enemy have. You just need to be careful to not lose too many in a fight because they are, they are cheap. But... It's really hard to get a lot of critical mass with them if you're losing uh, a couple of beat up every every fight. So you need to micro them a lot. Not micro, they can just do okay, maybe a hate here. But if you micro them, and you can get a lot of value out of them. So definitely one of the best uh, air units. Um, and the other thing for the Dark Elf is the Emissary of Nor. I'll put them into A tier because they do sound amazing. They are nice looking model. Uh, they are not that cheap. They are kind of flying tank that 
I have a decent 100 damage, I think, uh, with magic attack. But their abilities to spawn skeleton is really what make them good. Uh, I won't put them into S tier because you don't want too many of them. Like, just four of them is enough to uh, win most fight because you will sacrifice your spider or even strider, sleeper, whatever is your front line at this point in the game. It's a late game unit. So everything that dies in the front line can be reanimated in Skeleton with the Emissary of North. So you bas basically regenerate a front line with them casting spell. So that will allow you to use your Twisted One or anything that shoot to get more DPS value because they have more shield to tank for them. So they are great doing that. Um, I've did a couple of games where if the enemy have like five mines and they have like 15 worker on a iron mine you can use two of them just do a little run by kill a couple of worker raise the skeleton skeleton will then kill other worker that will raise more skeleton and you can really just deny a wall iron mine like that and run away the skeleton will still be there to annoy and delay your enemy eco uh, and then you can bring them back to your front line and provide support as you push uh, another side. So there's some stuff you can do with them. Uh, they're quite tanky too. So it's not easy to snipe them down. But the only annoying thing is that if you don't babysit them, when they run out of focus, they will uh, basically turn into a... Uh, like a medic. They will just stop casting. They will move. Like if you did an attack move, uh, they will cast everything and then move toward the point where you order them to attack. But they will still be in caster spell uh, mode. So they will not do their regular attack. You need to turn these casting off. Then put them into attack mode. To have them not just walk in front of your entire army and die to uh, enemy focus fire. So pretty decent. You just don't want to mass them uh they cost soul and the souls are gonna be for your twisted one or uh basilisk at this point so maybe scion you want to use your soul more on other things a couple of them is great but not too much they also have an upgrade that you can spawn a melee skeleton and a archer skeleton the archer skeleton basically deal the same amount of damage as an infiltrator so in the late game where a lot of people are using mage unit uh, raising a skeleton that deal infiltrator damage with pierce damage uh, will deal a lot better with the mage or uh, flying birds or balloon. So if you need more range firepower uh, instead of meat shield, they can do both. So the skeleton can be tanky with the melee one and deal a little bit of damage with the archer one. So you can really snowball a huge army out of nowhere with them resurrecting people. So that's pretty much it for the Dark Elf. Uh, for the Orc, I don't know. I, I, I think I want to put them into seeds here because I like them. But stats wise, they suck. So <laughs> they are really costly for the Orc right now. Uh, mainly, like I said in another video, the Orcs add a really great economy, uh, OP. I'm gonna say it, uh, the economy was out of the roof. So the Warven costing a lot of food and iron was not a big deal for them, so they could afford them, and they would be like a C or B tier. But since the Arc Eco just got nerfed so hard, uh, but the price of the Wyvern and other units like the War Trolls and Shaman and whatnot did not decrease, uh, they are too overpriced for what they do. You, you just want late game to mass Shaman, they will do the burning and with pester deal the area damage. Basically, what a war wyvern will do, but into two units that will be uh, most cost efficient. The wyvern would just uh, drop your bank and do nothing and get sniped. Uh, even if you upgrade them, they can be upgraded to have more HP, but it's not worth it. Uh, they're gonna be sniped. They have a long attack animation. So most of the time they target something and the something die and they didn't shoot. 
so they reacquire another target they load up the the animation the other target die so they don't shoot and an entire fight i saw one wyvern land one hit and the fight was like two minutes so they're not worth it the shaman will attack faster the pester will tank um there's other option for the orc that are most cost efficient than the wyvern so maybe if the orc eco wasn't like that nerfed or if the dev reduce the cost of the unit they can be a c or b tier like having a couple of them will help deal with like protector frontline and stuff um kind of had a little bit more of air superiority so that they don't die like pesterers will die a lot uh, because they're weak their ground unit but having a wyvern in the air force the enemy to use range unit to deal with them so they can be good as a support, but they're too costly, so I'm gonna put them there. But I still think they're better than the uh, Dwarven Dropship, so I think I'm going that way. And if I need to put them in order of tier, I think I'm gonna be putting the Iron Baker first, then the Beetle. After that, I'm gonna put the Emissary, the Dwarf, the Phoenix. Um, yeah, I think that's great like that. So this is all the flying unit there is in the game right now. I don't think they will add more units, so I'm just looking if I didn't miss anything. So yeah. And by flying unit, I mean something that they that can fly over terrain in unit. Like the harvester is basically a flying unit, but they stick to the ground. So even if they are kind of levitating or using telekinesis or whatnot, uh, they're not consider flying unit just like the specter so i'm not putting them into this category here and tier list um so yeah that's pretty much it for the flying and air unit tier list uh like i said this is purely based on what i've seen and i played and uh, maybe somebody have a hidden build order that make uh, the dropship better I mean the, the the dropper bird better and I'm not aware of but as far as I'm concerned that's pretty much where the meta is right now before the launch of reforce uh, that will be coming in December I've heard that they will do multiplayer patch I don't know if the stats will change but that's pretty much where I see all the flying unit now so yeah I think that's wrap it up so please if you liked uh subscribe share and if you're not agreeing with me uh, please feel free to put a dislike and explain why in the comment uh, i'm reading pretty much every comment uh, i don't reply to all of them but i'm fully aware of what you guys think um, and if you have something to say please do it will help me figure out if i'm wrong or not and just readjust myself this is not set in stone. This is forever changing. It's a tier list. Uh, but for now, that's where I see them at all. So, hope you guys have a good one. And see you on the next one. Ciao, bye.